Neon is without a doubt one of the most prolific and influential agents we've gotten added into the game in a long time. There's a lot of nuance to this agent, as she's introducing new movement mechanics into the game that we've never seen before. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed by her kit and you want to learn more, we've got you covered in this video. What is going on Pro Guides family, it is your host Sergeant Frost, and today we've got the only Neon guide you'll ever need. And speaking of guides, if you want a guide to help climbing ranked, we're making our last calls on the Zombs Bootcamp coming up this month. Spots are limited, and we have a hard cutoff for signups in 4 days. Make sure to check out the link in the description if you're interested in learning from the best, and climbing higher than you ever have before. For this video, remember that Neon is still the newest agent in the game, so her playstyle and how she's applied to the meta could drastically change the longer the community at large gets to experiment with her. Even though this video will mostly consist of our opinions on Neon, her identity as an agent is still subject to change in the future, especially if buffs or nerfs come to her kid in the future. In this video, we go over her abilities and facts to know about them, and how she will change the game and the meta. We will get into her unique style of play, and we'll wrap it up with ideal team comps that she works well with as well as any final thoughts on the agent. So let's jump right into the ability breakdown. Fast Lane is Neon's C ability. It costs 300 credits, it lasts for 6 seconds, it does 30 damage per tick if it touches enemies, and she has one charge of this ability. Fast Lane is an ability that you will have to get familiar with fast if you want success attacking with Neon. Fast Lane is one of her best entry tools to use on attack. This ability has multiple uses once you really learn the nuances of how to deploy it on the map. For instance, it can very well be used for vision blocking, and it can be used as a diversion when entering onto a site. A simple explanation of Fastlane is that it is a much stronger and more useful version of Phoenix's Wall. However, one big negative of Fastlane compared to Phoenix's Wall is that you can't bend it or curve it when deploying it. This makes Fastlane much more of a commitment since you're telegraphing your team's movements once you lay it down on the map. So what are some good tips we found for using this ability? Well, the first one actually goes against common sense when using this ability, and that is you don't always want to lay this ability down and just create a single path to entry. This heavily telegraphs your movements and entry path, and smart defenders who aren't afraid will go to the end of your fast lane and attempt to catch you sprinting down. Trust me, one of my biggest pet peeves of this ability while practicing Neon was getting killed by ballsy defenders who walked into my fast lane in hopes of getting a multi-kill spray down TikTok clip. I refuse to admit that this may or may not have worked for some enemies from time to time, but at least I have warned you. So, how do we prevent a catastrophe when using this ability so that your team doesn't get sprayed down in one clip? A good tip for Fastlane when using it is to think about creating multiple pathways rather than to fixate on just a single lane. What I mean by that is to use the wall in a way that lets you separate pathways from the left or the right. For example, on B-side Ascent, you could use the wall from B-Main towards Stairs and that does achieve a few key objectives. First, it blocks off vision from Market and CT so enemies can't easily get sightlines on you and your team. Second, it creates multiple avenues to push by segmenting a pathway to stairs, a pathway to boathouse to hit the switch, and also a pathway to lane. Third, it gives you a lot of freedom to pick your path depending on utility available, or where you feel the enemy is not expecting you. Doing this will often catch enemies close by off guard since they can't see or hear through the wall well, and it does give yourself and your teammates a chance to play peekaboo and claim a surprise kill on a defender before they can even react. So, what are some ways we can use this ability outside of its current standard use? Other practical ways to use the wall are for deception and vision blocking. To use your wall for deception, angle your wall in a non-conventional way and play mind games. Essentially, you're implying that the wall is where you're going to entry from, but in reality, you could choose any other angle or even bait utility with it. It will take practice on all of the maps to learn what some of the best angles are to deploy this wall in this type of way, but once you get the hang of mind games surrounding the wall, you will be able to fake out enemies much more easily. And finally, the last and most obvious way is to just use it for vision blocking like you would a Viper Wall or a Phoenix Wall. After all, it's still great as an ability by itself, so sometimes you won't need to pull any theatrics to get some good value out of it. Relay Bolt is Neon's Q ability. This ability throws a bolt that bounces once and leaves a stun field on both points the ability makes contact with. Neon gets two charges of this ability, each costing 200 credits, and it has a 3 second concussed stun duration if it lands. Without a doubt, Relay Bolt is one of the most versatile abilities in Neon's kit. This ability is important to learn if you want to get maximum value out of Neon. On paper, this ability is fairly simple, but in practice, it can be very hard to master and requires a fair bit of practice to feel comfortable with. So what is a practical way to use it? Let's say for instance, instead of exposing yourself when entering by walking up to a doorway and throwing it exactly where you want it to land, practice learning how to bounce it and ricochet this thing around corners and you will see your efficiency with this ability rise significantly. Think of it like a Sova dart, except it shocks on the first hit as well as the bounce after. This way you can reach out and stun people with this ability without having to expose yourself in the process. 
This leads us to our next point, which is to practice using this ability on the fly, but also in a relatively safe position. Spend time learning the best ways and angles to bounce this ability to hit common spots that enemies would normally hide in. Keep in mind though that you can use this ability while running, and it shoots out really quickly, so it's a good idea to think about ways to weave this in as you approach a potential duel. One tip for using this better is when you're indoors and you know an enemy is close by, instead of attempting to bounce this ability directly off the wall to hit your target, try to bounce this off the floor or the ceiling to catch an enemy by surprise and give them little time to react to the grenade coming their way. One reason for why this works is because it's really fast and it can catch opponents off guard. The other is actually because this ability doesn't drop off very much when flying, so it's harder to bounce off walls consistently, so it's a bit more reliable. Another really good tip and something to keep in mind when using Relay Bolt, you can use this ability from very far away to neutralize common angles as you run up to them. A great visual example of this is stunning Pizza Cubby in mid-ascent. You can fire this ability from afar to clear the corner while running up to it and give yourself some time to slide around the corner and land a kill on a stunned enemy. Using this ability close up sometimes will accidentally stun you and your teammates in the crossfire. So using it from afar gives it time to fly and it gives your team time to run behind it without negative side effects of dealing with a bad bounce. High Gear is Neon's signature E ability. This ability is free and it gives you enhanced speed and it gives you the ability to slide when you click alternate fire. The slide does reset after getting two kills just like Jet's dash and Raze's grenade. At its core, this ability is Neon's bread and butter. It's her signature ability for a reason because it ties her whole kit together. And using this ability is what creates the skill gap between Neon players. But we will get more into that later. This ability is what allows Neon to take advantage of the speed and agility meta that is quickly encapsulating the duelist class. The main reason Neon's entry pathing is so good is due to the fact that her speed and slide combined with her fast lane and nades makes it so that Neon can fly into a sight and get into the enemy's faces. This ability is very straightforward, but that doesn't mean it has its complexities, nuances, and tricks for getting the most out of it though. One of the biggest tips for mastering her movement is learning where, when, and how to slide. We can confirm that there is no official slide canceling that you would normally find in games like Warzone or Apex Legends, but there are ways to divert your slide to give it a slide cancel-like effect. Another big tip we have for this ability is learning how to diversify your slide, and you do this through manipulating your movement keys as you slide. Using your movement keys is a core Neon movement concept that you will need to practice and master, as it will allow you to outmaneuver and outplay your opponents with consistency once you master the technique. A great example of this is that you can come out of your fast lane by diverting your slide to the left or the right by pressing A or D instantly on your keyboard while holding W. For an even more nuanced trick, you can even slightly divert your slide backwards by sliding or using the A or D key and aiming yourself backwards. There have even been examples of some content creators sliding backwards by taking your finger off the W at the last second and then pressing the S key just before pressing the slide button. This is a very hard trick to pull off, but if you practice it in the range, you can definitely get the hang of it. All in all, High Gear introduces a new movement mechanic pretty unique to Neon. And whether it's just confusing to deal with currently, or a staple in the future for entry pathing, we'll have to see how things turn out for sure. And finally, wrapping up her abilities, we have Neon's Ultimate Overdrive. Neon's Ultimate gives her access to high gear for an extended period of time as she activates her lightning ability. This ability costs 7 ult points and lasts the duration of high gear. The charge timer does reset on kill. After several days of practicing and testing out Neon, I have to say in my personal opinion, Neon's ultimate is one of the most fun abilities in the game to use, and it definitely makes her a fast-paced fun character to play once you get good with this ability. We don't have hard numbers yet on the exact range of falloff damage for her ultimate. The official Valorant wiki has that her ultimate does approximately 22 damage to 10 damage per tick depending on the range. And this ability does not have a headshot multiplier, so aim for the body to help your aim out while tracking with a beam. Always go for the biggest part of the body as a tip for those who struggle with tracking and hit scan aim. This ability is straightforward in concept. Channel your best Darcidious Force Lightning skills and run around and fry people with your electric beam. And the best part is that you can run around like the Flash while doing it. Our biggest tip for using this ability is that Overdrive does have high movement accuracy, so don't stand still while using this ability. Move around and try to run circles around your opponents so that they can't kill you while you're trying to fry them. Before we move into the second half of the video, we have our question of the day. Today's question is, what are your first impressions of Neon? Personally, I really like Neon as an agent. The duelist class in my opinion was starting to get a little stale as some of the main duelists in the past started to become weaker over time. The duelist class definitely needs some diversifying and I think Neon is exactly what we need right now to bring the class back up to what it used to be in the past. We have to keep an eye out for Neon to see where she fits into the meta and how powerful she will be as time goes on. So let us know what you guys think about Neon in the comment section down below. Now let's get right back into the video. Let's talk about a big part of Neon's identity, which is her playstyle. To get a better understanding of her power level, let's address where she sits in the meta first and foremost. 
Neon at the moment is not heads and shoulders better than Jet, but she does do a few things better than her as an attacking agent. She does have the luxuries such as more practical utility and CC in her kit which does give her the utility advantage on Jet. She has stun grenades to incapacitate her enemies, she has a flame wall to help her entry pathing, and she can use it as vision blocking to help her team, and she has the equivalent of Jet's dash in her slide ability, but not as straight up powerful as Jet's dash. The best part about Neon being a mobile duelist is that she does have a lot of outplay potential once you master her speed and slide ability. Learning how to divert your dash to give you a little slide cancel like movement, you will be able to outplay a lot of enemies as this ability becomes a glorified Ferrari peak except it's much smoother. The skill gap for Neon mains will come from learning the ins and outs of the best ways to use her run and slide ability for each of the current maps. This is what's going to separate the beginning Neon players from the veteran mains of her that put in the time to learn her most optimal running paths. This is especially important for spawn barriers, because there could potentially be angles that used to be impossible to take as other agents that can now be taken with Neon's increased speed. Neon's playstyle can be summed up with speed, agility, and fluidity in her movements. Part of learning her is learning how to abuse her speed to the max potential, whether it be with entering or clearing angles or even rotating. Just like Jet's dash, Neon can't have her gun out while running and sliding, as pulling out her gun stops both of those animations, so be careful and choose wisely about when you want to go fast. Neon is a master rotator both on offense and defense. Her extreme speed allows her to traverse the map in half the time it would take the other agents. This makes her great at running fake plays on offense and she can travel the map quickly after her team fakes a bomb site. And on defense, she is a fast rotator because she can get to the opposite bomb sites in record time, while still having the speed to rotate back in case the attacking team tries to fake. Neon's main weakness, like I said earlier, is her lack of damage utility and flashes, as this makes her slightly weaker on defense because her only tools for defense are her gun and her stuns. She isn't useless or underpowered on defense. As we said earlier, she can rotate easily which becomes a huge asset for her team in terms of creating man advantages when defending sites. However, she does lack tools to deal with rushes against her, so you should pick your positioning wisely when playing on defense. For team comps, Neon at the end of the day is a duelist which means she is designed as an agent to work well with many different types of agents in the game. But if we had to narrow it down to a few in particular, Neon does well with agents that can support her entry with utility. Neon does not have damage utility to put kill pressure on enemies that are holding angles and bomb sites, so she needs agents that can dish out damage while she clears out a path for her team. Agents including but not limited to Astra, Viper, KO, Sky, Killjoy, Raze, and Reyna are all great for supporting Neon. All of these agents have some form of damage utility or flashes that help her break into sites while entering. Neon at the end of the day works well with agents who can keep up with her in game and follow behind her speed to get into sites quickly. That's why duelists like Raze and Jet pair well with Neon as a duelist combo in game since they can use their high mobility to break open sites at light speed. Neon at the moment looks like an agent that is poised to play a huge role in the meta to start 2022, especially since a lot of the other duelists are slipping in popularity and in power levels as of recent. If you are a duelist player, pick up Neon ASAP and learn her because she is an agent that should be in your arsenal and she will become pivotal in the game's meta pretty soon. If you are not a duelist player, keep an eye on her because you are going to need to learn how to counter her pretty soon. Well guys, that wraps up our guide on Neon, and our thoughts on her playstyle as an agent. Also, don't forget to check out ProGuides.com to gain some access to some truly amazing on-demand coaching. This has been your host Sergeant Frost, and I'll see you all again in the next video.